Today we're going to be looking at the methods for EV charge point testing and we're going to be using our MFT1741 Plus and EVCA210. I'm Gordon Billings and my colleague Peter Wade will be answering the questions at the end of this little presentation. As an introduction, I'm sure most of you are aware that one of the biggest growth areas in electrical installations over recent times has been the increase in demand for charge points, otherwise known as electric vehicle supply equipment. This has also created the need for new test equipment and also new techniques for testing. One new item of equipment is the EV adapter. Mega's offering is the EVCA210. The EV adapter mimics a vehicle being connected to the charge point, and then with the correct settings made, it can create various stages of charge. It also has built-in functions to mimic faults on the vehicle that would be connected. These have to prevent the charging process from continuing. It also allows connection of the additional test equipment to carry out all of the other normal electrical tests. We'll start now setting up the EV adapter. The proximity pilot or PP state should be set to the correct charging rate for the EVSE being tested. In this case, we're going to use 32 amps. You then set the control pilot or CP state. This is mimicking the state of charge of the vehicle. If you notice on the little table, we've got non-vented and vented options. So non-vented would be your normal domestic wall pod. Vented would be your commercial fan assisted versions. In both cases, A is no vehicle connected. B is the vehicle connected but not calling for charge and C and D represent a vehicle connected when it's calling for charge. So if we put it onto C, that will then trip in the contactor within the charge point and liven up the EV adapter. You can see on the picture here that the phase light next to L1 is a light. This is because it's a single phase version. Should it be a three phase, all three lights would be illuminated but we're now ready to continue with tests. The pre-e-pre test is probably the most important one of all. This makes sure that there's no potential on the earth and you simply put your thumb on the silver button. If you do it at all positions while you're setting up, you will check all conditions and all charge states when you're doing it. If the LED light to the side of the button does light up, you should stop all testing and find out why there is potential on the earth and what value that is. Because as normal, you're allowed up to the 50 volts, but you don't want to be leaving anything higher than that on two tonne of steel insulated on rubber tires sitting outside that somebody's going to touch. So it is very important to make sure there's no potential of any significant value on that earth. We then have a PE error. This actually mimics an earth fault on the vehicle being connected. This must stop the charge process carrying on. And if you press the button in, as you can see, the mains light goes off. We know that the charging process has stopped. Finally, you've got the CP error. This mimics an electrical fault on the vehicle. Again, it must stop the charge process. It will also show up as a fault on the charge point itself because it's on the electrical side. We now look at the type of tester that you're gonna to use to do your final test, which will be an earth loop test and checking the RCDs and RDC tests. So that tester has to be capable of doing an earth fault test through the 6 milliamp RDC DD protection. It's also got to be capable of testing all types of RCD and RCBOs. 
and it's also got to be capable of doing the 6 milliamp ramp test on the RDCDD device. We recommend the MFT1741 Plus for this because it has bespoke settings in there to make sure that it doesn't trip the 6 milliamp RDCDD when testing for earth of all loop. It can test all types of RCDs and RCBOs, but it's also capable in the automatic EV RCD setting of doing the ramp test on the 6 milliamp RDCDD. If you know, other testers that have got variable outputs on loop test may well cause the RDCDD to trip. Not in every case, but very often it will. So we're going to do the earth fault loop test. So we set up as normal with the mega on LPE and Z and it automatically defaults to the three low. Because we're going through RCDs, it needs to be a low current test. However, there's a second selection that you need to do, and that's by pressing the scrolling key, which is just off the side of the picture, in order to select the type B symbol at the bottom. Now, it's not saying that it's doing a type B RCD test. We're just reusing symbols. But this is the required setting to make sure that the 6 milliamp RDCDD isn't tripped. Once we've completed the earth loop test, we then need to look at the RCD test. And this is simply a case of setting auto and EV in the RCD section on the selections. You don't need to make any further selections. It does it for you. It will then carry on and complete six AC tests, the two at half, two at one and two at five as standard, and then finish off with the two DC ramp tests up to six milliamps. Now, very often we get asked, why is the RCD or RCBO tested as a type AC when more often than not, it will be a type A. The reason for that is you have a 30 milliamp RCD, a 6 milliamp RDCDD. The combined A test, which has DC and AC elements to it, may well go above the 6 milliamp and trip that instead of the RCD or RCBO under test. So you check the AC when you're doing the RCD test and you check the DC on the lower rated RDCDD. Just in case you're wondering, RDCDD stands for Residual Direct Current Detecting Device. And as we've said, that is tested using a ramp test. Once you've completed all the tests, scroll through your readings and you'll be able to tell all eight readings that you achieved. That completes the testing. Mega do offer in the UK full country coverage with the territory managers. Our contact details are on the side here. Or we've got the uh, technical support in the office with the phone number underneath. We're there to help you should you need it. Just finally, it comes to me to say, do you have any questions? Thank you.